Anything about 2K18? Oh wow, 2K18. Before we get into 2K18, I think one of the biggest challenges we faced this year in 2K17 was just balancing shooting. So we went back, reviewed all the past shooting systems in our games, all the way back to 2K11, took all the good things that we liked about all those different systems, and we put together what I think is the best system to date for 2K18. And we're so excited for you guys to try it out in September. And speaking of community feedback, we've heard a lot about shooting. And Mike Wang mentioned a little bit about what's going to be changing with shooting next year. Yeah. So shooting is something that the community has been talking about all year long. I think ever since the introduction of green releases, a lot of fans have a lot of different kind of feedback about that. I think they've kind of learned to use it as a crutch. Like if I learn my release and I think the bar is filled up, I should make that shot 100% of the time. But we were seeing a lot of really high shooting percentages, high 60s, high 70s, even some of the high 80s and 90s in Pro-Am. I think when we start going forward into 2K18, I'm really glad that the producers are looking towards what made shooting fun and realistic in previous games, because there has been a lot of you know, differences in game by game on how shooting works. But I'm really excited to see what they come up with in 2K18, because I think we're going to see a lot of improvements there with shooting. Yo, what's good with the squad? It's Malik the God. And well, well, well. Is it finally the end of an era, bro? We had 2K15, 16. 17 and 2k uh, I don't know man <laughs> if y'all seen these clips that I just showed y'all before man it's looking a little shaky <laughs> but nah man if you seen what, what Mike Wayne said bro he said we looked at all past 2k's all the way back to 2k11 to see what made the shooting fun in those games and if you think about it 2k11 2k12 2k13 14 all those 2k's had one thing in common there was no shot meter there was no green releases all you had was a shot feedback thing that told you if your shot was a plus or if it was an elf it was a grade system from a plus to elf that was it you know what i'm saying and that was the whole reason they even thought of they brought in a shot meter was because they, we had people in the community complaining that they were getting a plus releases on the shot feedback but they were breaking and i think that's where 2k might have went wrong like as much as i love green releases i think they might actually be right if that's what they're trying to do i think we might need to go back to that old system just because i feel like we like they said we've been using it as a crutch you know like and i think we've gotten we've gotten to the point where we actually believe that we're supposed to make every perfect release jump shot when in reality it's not like that like do i think that a lot of shots should go in if you have a high um three point shot yes but do i think just because you you were you got the perfect release on a jump shot you're supposed to get a automatic bucket that's not how it is like in the nba in real life anywhere you play in real life you can get the greatest release ever and still mess around and airball. You know what I mean? Like, it, it just happens. Now, do I think if you have a great release, you, the release feels good, is that an indicator that you might make the shot? Absolutely. I just don't think just because you get the perfect release every time means that you should be 100% making that shot because there's so many factors that, that go into it that doesn't matter in 2k just for the simple fact that if you made the green release it was money every time except for maybe in 2k16 where you had a couple instances where you got a green release but it and it missed but other than that 15 green releases were 100% 17 green releases were 100% and you see people shooting unrealistic even though they're sharpshooters there's no reason you should be shooting 90% from the field on the park or pro-am like there's no reason like it, it just doesn't make sense nobody there's nobody ever in the league to shoot that high of a percentage I don't even think there's anybody in the league to ever shoot 60% from the three-point line. It might even be a chance that there's nobody that's done over like 55% from the three-point line. So there's no reason why our 2K players should do the same thing. And I understand you could say, oh, we're NBA superstar, or it's a game. You're not supposed to be shooting realistically. But in reality, 2K is a is an NBA simulator. 
that's what they they do they're supposed to simulate the nba so when you say oh it's just the game this that and the other that's not what they're trying to be they're trying to be carbon copy nba for the most part you know what i'm saying and they do get a lot of aspects down but like i said shooting i feel like while i think certain players should shoot very high percentages I do not believe that they're supposed to shoot crazy unrealistic percentages and I really hope that's kind of what they go back to even though I know the community is going to get mad I know the community is going to want it back I just believe that I think the shop meter all in all is a crutch you know and I think if they were to go back it would make players better like i think it will make players better i know for a fact there's gonna be so much outrage if it does go away and honestly i'm i'm side with 2k on this one i hope that they stick to their guns you know what i mean and i don't side with 2k with a lot of things but for this if it's true and this is all speculation i'm just going off what i what, what i think they're talking about because that's all we can go off of right now but I just I really hope that they go through with it and they don't they they stick to their guns because I think it'll make us better. But in that beginning, I just know people are gonna be mad. But this your boy Malik and I'm out.